Hello! Today I'd like to show you how I do some of the red work stitchery that I do. Red work stitchery is usually done by hand and usually done with um, some stranded embroidery cotton and some scissors. We would need to have some thread, some scissors, a needle. The needle I use is usually um, an embroidery needle which has a slightly larger eye than a, just a regular sewing needle but you don't want a great big fat needle. Um, just one that's big enough to take two strands of the embroidery cotton. Um, and then of course some, some fabric to work on. And also I find it's very helpful to have some form of stabiliser on the back of the fabric. Now this could be a fusible stabiliser but in my case I've just got a, a cotton woven fabric. It's used, um, I think they use it for, for stabilising in clothing and things. And, and I call it antique cotton wadding. Um, but it's not strictly a wadding, uh, but it, what it does is help give a little bit of body to the fabric that you're going to stitch onto and it stays nice and soft because it's cotton. And because it's not fusible, I would need to baste the two pieces of fabric together and I've just used a large basting stitch just with a regular sewing thread to hold those because otherwise it may just want to slide around when you're sewing. So the stranded embroidery cotton, now I use a fairly dark red, it's a DMC that I'm using and I use colour 815 but there's many colours around that you could use um, and I'm just using two strands and so when I'm using it I would pull out two pulls from the skein which is approximately 24 inches long and I would cut that and I would then separate out two strands from that there's six strands in these skeins and I would just pull apart two and then I would use the rest later on. Um, so I have there two strands and I'm just going to separate those. If you just pull them gently they will just untwist as you go and you'll end up having four strands that you can pull apart again later and the two strands there. Um, red work stitchery is a fairly traditional form of uh, embroidery. Um, it became very popular when the turkey red thread became available um, and today we just use it for a lot of fun projects um, and it doesn't of course have to be red it can be any colour you like but then of course it's not red work stitchery and um, so today I'm just going to show you how to do a running stitch which is a fairly basic stitch um, and generally speaking pretty much anyone can do uh, but it just it's quite nice if you can just get it nice and even now if I was going to be working on a particular design for my stitchery I would mark it, I might trace it first before I put the stabiliser on the back so there's just a single layer of cotton fabric and I would use one of these water erasable marking pens to draw my lines on so that when I uh, wash it out afterwards the, the markings will just disappear. So if I was just going to be drawing some particular design I would probably trace it or if I'm really good I would, I would be able to just draw it but I just find that if I give myself some sort of a guide it helps enormously unless I'm doing completely free form work. And so then with my two strands of thread in my needle I'm just going to start with just a little knot on the back and that's another good reason for having the stabiliser because little bits and pieces of thread then won't show through to the front later on. And so to do the running stitch um, it really is just as it's called it's a running stitch so you would pop your needle down a little bit away from from where your thread has come up and just pull up slightly less on your needle than the, st than the space between. You want your stitch to be slightly longer that's showing than the bit that's underneath and this is so that you get the colour showing through nicely. And you could probably put um, three of those on the needle before you need to pull it through. Then pull that through and that should sit nice and evenly. So I'll just continue on here following this this line that I've drawn. You could use a pencil or something else for the line. I find the washout pens are very good because if I've made a little mistake I know it's going to disappear later. So I've got three on my needle again and then just pull that through. Now I'm not generally a hand worker so I'm probably not the best person to show you some of these things but I do enjoy a little bit of red work stitchery. In general it's a fairly quick form of embroidery. It's definitely a simple form of embroidery but it's very nice if you can get your stitches nice and even because that really adds to the look of it. 
So you can see that it's really just a simple in and out movement um, with your stitch that's showing slightly larger than the stitch space in between that you've gone through on the underside. So on the back side you're just going to see this little um, little bit that, that's in between and that should be um, quite neat and tidy for you. Um, you might just want to start out, if you're just starting out doing this sort of stitchery, something really simple. could be a little row of lines of the running stitch with just some buttons that make it look like a little row of flowers. This might be nice on a pocket or a little border or pretty much anything, a little pin cushion maybe. Um, and so when you've finished all that, you can um, wash it, iron it, the colours are colour fast, there's no problem with these embroidery threads. So just to help you, on my website, gourmetquilter.com, I have a stitch guide that's downloadable. This is a free download from my website, which goes through some of the stitches that I use when I do red work stitchery. So you're welcome to go and download that one if you'd like to. I've also done a pattern of some small stitcheries, which I've put together into a quilt, which I've called that stitched quilt, which is available to purchase on my website. That's gourmetquilter.com. But I can just show you this quilt and where I've used some of the running stitch in this quilt. So here is the quilt, and it's a, it's a patchwork quilt, but I've interspersed some of the blocks with some stitchery on. And I'll just bring it in closer. If we look at this kiwi, you can see that I've done some outlining and then I have done some running stitch just inside and that just adds a little extra bit of um, decor I guess, a little bit of dimension to the kiwi, a little bit of fun. So that's how you do running stitch and another time I'll show you how to do some of the other stitches. Thank you.